Well, good day, boys and girls. Did you miss me? I know you did. Hey, today we're building in the power generator, power station, whatever you want to call the things for the chuck wagon so we could cook with electricity while we're out camping. Hey, let's stop talking. Let's start getting after it. All right, on the solar chuck wagon build, I'm going to put the battery, the charger, and the inverter all down in here. Now I measured it all out, cut up my pieces. I don't want to bore you, but uh, basically, I'm going to have this. I put that piece of it just to give it room so it doesn't sit right on top of the battery. Give it the battery some breathing room. I'm going to put this piece right here like that. This piece right like that so give you a little idea what's going on here and then I'm gonna put some supports but it's gonna look like that then the charger the inverter is gonna go up on top of here on this plate right here the uh, charger is gonna go here or over here ah, oh, over here ah the battery's gonna be turned around it's just the terminals are gonna be over here chargers are going to go here my bus bar is going to go here one of the uh, breakers is going to go here so basically I'm going to put two handles here I'm going to cut some handles in here so I can pull this off so basically I'm going to be able to drop the battery down into the I'm going to be able to drop the battery down in the box bloom and then that's just going to set over top of there and I don't want the battery to be outside in this box in the heat and the cold. I want the battery to be inside. So whenever I go camping, I'm just going to have to throw the battery in there, throw that box and slide it on top of the battery. And then I'm going to make my connections to go out to the rest of the trailer, if that makes any sense. All right, well, we're going to take the LiPo's battery. We're going to drop it in here. Like so. Then we're going to take, and the inverter is going to be sitting right on here. The controller, the uh, charge controller is going to be here. And it's just going to slip right on top there. So I'll be sticking here. Then I'm going to put a hole here so I can get the solar panels hooked up to my charger. And the inverter, the 110 is going to come out here. And then I'm going to have 12 volt out here also. So. But I don't want to leave this battery out in the heat or the cold all the time. So basically, I'm gonna, once I'm done, I'll have handles on this. I'm going to cut some handles in the top, take it out, take the battery back, and I'm going to have quick disconnects. So there'll be little wires hooked from here to go over to here and here over to here to hook it up real quick, too. So that's my theory, at least. Let's see how it turns out. All right, so we got the, the layout here. Got everything mounted. Uh, those wires aren't officially hooked up yet. I'm going to cut those to length. But yeah, let's uh, go ahead and lift this off so we can work on it. All right, so we got it off the battery laying sideways. So we can get underneath here and work and start wiring up these wires from the controller over to the bus bars. All right, let's go over what we got going on here. So basically, I'm finished. If I want to pull this off, all I got to do is disconnect the two battery terminals. And this whole unit comes off top of the battery. But we got the Obotech Pure Sine Wave Inverter. Love this thing. Got my LiPo's 200 amp hour battery. So even if the sun's not shining, heck, I can go a day or two. No problem. Two days, probably no problems camping. Cooking, you know, with heat items and everything. Got the PV. This is from for the solar hookups from where I run a hole in the uh, chuck wagon box. Comes down. Got a 60 amp breaker. Twice the current, I'm just using it pretty much as a cutoff switch with a little bit of protection, but mainly a cutoff switch. 
down to my i sun energy 30 amp and i'm starting to really like this thing a lot it just works it's simple no frills gets a job done plenty of airflow and uh yeah i slotted it down it gives you a, a mounting uh cardboard to where you put your screws you stick this down on but you know it can bounce maybe so i put a screw right there to keep her tucked on there so you can't lift it up off unless i pull that screw out uh basically and then the batteries the battery hookups they just come over here go to your now this has the big lugs on it yeah let me take it has the big lugs on it it also comes with smaller screw downs so so basically i'm using you know the battery comes over here and goes to the the positive and negative you know hookups on my bus bar here and again the pv the negative just comes out there for the so uh for the solar panels and then the positive comes over here Gets the breaker cut off, goes up there. So that goes up there. Then, obviously, I got the negative for the uh, inverter. And also, the negative for the battery just come tie down here. Now, the positive, one goes to the inverter. The other one comes on out. Comes over to this 200 amp cut off. And then goes down to the battery. And of course the negative just comes out and goes straight to the battery. So yeah, if you disconnect these two, off it comes. And this is just for auxiliary. Again, it's for this box here. So I can hook this up. And it has, you know, the... Oh my goodness, dark over here. It's got the cigarette lighter plug, your USBs. So I can run my refrigerator. The... Uh, don't mind my wife's crafting. Oh my gosh, it's everywhere. You know, to run the refrigerator, the 12-volt refrigerator. Uh, this will easily run the 700 watt. Of course, it uses 1100 watts to run, but 700 watt microwave over there. And I ran a fan on this. Uh, a fan, oh my gosh. A hair dryer. 1500 watts. I pumped out of this guy last night for five minutes now here's where you guys can all beat me up i made a mistake a long time ago and bought these copper clad connectors here copper clad wires are two gauge and uh it ran that hair dryer for a good five minutes and they were starting to get warm but that i'm only gonna run that for three minutes it's only 1100 watts so these wires for now are plenty to just run a 900 watt heating element and stuff like that but yes probably in the future i'll change these out i just wanted to get this done and start using it for now and uh, i had the wires laying around and i just wanted to complete this it wouldn't take long to replace these couple wires up here but yeah i got that and that's my layout i think it's pretty slick like i say i can just I put thumb holes in here. I can just lift this right on off. Bring it inside here into my wife's crafting room. Oh my gosh. I got to share this little tiny spot. The rest, all this. Crafting, crafting, crafting. Crafting, crafting, crafting. She says, I'll let you have this back corner right here. That's all I get. But yeah, I got this other 1,000 uh, watt inverter build with the uh, Golden Mate Orion. 1000 battery i showed that on go watch some of my other videos and uh, i should uh show this whole box really good one day and then this is my big guy right here this is my first start it's got four redodo batteries so about 5000 watt hour build here with you know proper everything proper disconnects for my solar i can run i got four three 400 watt panels that i can run if we lose power off that guy a 3000 watt inverter 
Again, I'm only going to probably use a thousand watts to run the refrigerator and freezer and the fan for my natural gas. That's what I built this for. And I really like the T-Tokus breakers. Everything just works on this. So I've just kept it going with that. Of course, I've got a, it's a 24 volt system. So yeah, I can bring in 1200 watts of solar panels, no problem. Run this 3000 water and, uh, of course, you have to break down some things, maybe from 24 volt to 12 volt. So I got that breakdown, a little nice uh, box. See, this is going to be running in the house, probably in the garage. So I want a little bit nicer everything, and that's two gauge wire again. Probably not, you know, it's 24 volt two gauge. I probably can run this 3,000 water, but uh, again, the wire should maybe be a little bit thicker. But that being said. It's 24 volt, running probably close, just a thousand watts max. So I'm way, way, those wires are plenty for what I want to use this box for. And to be honest with you, now that I got that box, and I got 1200 watts of solar panels for that, I've got this box. Uh, heck, I got four 100 watt panels there, plus my portable 300 watt panels there that i can run off of this guy built this for the solar chuck wagon so if you lose power i can just set this up into the the solar chuck wagon with a 370 watt panel It'd be you know this could be charging so yeah if we lose power now it's just gonna be uh great and yeah i used to go with these redot dues you know I used to say Rado do, don't Rado don't, but to be honest with you, I'm finding batteries comparable price. This light poles is built like a tank inside. And and uh that's what I liked about the light poles. It's good price and just well constructed inside. And then uh, you know, the Orion, the Golden Mate Orion 1000, it's got a built-in screen on top of it. I showed that in one of my other videos. And it's Bluetooth, so I can tell what's all going on in this box, how much the inverter's pulling, all that with that. Now, what I like about this one is this 2,000 water. It has a panel that tells you the battery voltage, how much, you know, watts are, you know, it's using and stuff. And it's wireless. It charges up for like, and you can use it for like 30 days, and you can turn it on, turn it off, see what all is going on with this. So I wasn't too concerned about, you know, this battery doesn't have Bluetooth. It just needs to be long lasting for running cooking, like a thousand watt. Uh, the coffee pot's like 600 watts. Uh, my burner top is 900 watts. That's 1100 watts. What else? Do I, uh, oh, the, can't forget the George Foreman grill where it runs 700 watts. So yeah, these wires suck, but they're going to be just fine for running the wattage I'm going to use. What I wanted was Kate, you know, capacity, and that's 200 amp hour capacity battery right there. That's a little tour of what I got going on, and uh, yeah, the next video, I, you know, I'll be putting this into the chuck wagon. Then I got to drill a hole so I can take the uh, auxiliary box, you know, with the 12 volt socket and USBs, so I can get it out to the back of the chuck wagon. The solar, I, you know, I got to be able to extend it up to the 370 watt panel. I got to tell you, I think I'm ready to go. But the slick design, you know, this just pulls right off, fits right in that toolbox in the back and only takes up uh, 23 inches, 23 inches across here. So it takes up 23 inches and uh, sits all down in there to keep it out of the weather, keep it out of the dust while I'm driving there. But literally, if I wanted to, I could pull it out and move it over to the picnic table or something like that, too. It's totally uh, easy to move. Now, I can I can take the battery handles and I could lift it, the whole thing. It's, it's heavy. So I still could lift it on out of there, but being able to break it apart and the battery, I think it's 40 some pounds. You know everything so just breaking it apart makes it a lot easier to get around and just takes a couple seconds to get these two uh the two uh 
terminals and I'll keep a half inch I'll keep a half inch uh, I just find an extra one and I'll just keep it in the kit so I can be able to do that well boys and girls you know thanks for putting up with all this craft and crap everywhere and uh yeah you know get yourself a 12 volt refrigerator those things are awesome uh microwave george foreman heater element and what else did i say coffee pot there you go i'm ready to go camping with the solar chuck wagon